I love to see the towns passing by and the ride is real beneath God's blue sky. Let me travel this land from the mountains to the sea, cause that's the life I bring. And when I'm gone and at my grave you stand, say God called home your rambling man. Welcome to Ramblin' Man Podcast, episode number 170. This one's with Thomas T.J. Savino, and he creates art through sculpture in a very interesting way. You'll hear about that more on the podcast. I don't want to do any spoilers here. But I appreciate him for coming on. Interesting talk. Glad that Ashley connected us. If you'd like to learn more about his work, you can go to tjsavino.com, T.J. S.A. B-I-N-O.com or give him a follow on Instagram at TJ Savino. Yeah, I really appreciate him for coming on. Sponsor this week is Feral John. Feral John is a graphic design, illustration, and social media consultation company based here in Knoxville, Tennessee. So they do work for clients big and small all over the country, all over the globe, in fact. But they also do photography, videography, video editing, and audio editing, website design, SEO, writing, content development, Hell, they'll babysit your kids if it nets them money. So make sure you give them a follow on social media on either Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn at at Feral Giant. And be sure to give them an email today and hire them for your next project. Without much further ado, here's the episode. Connected to you through, through Ashley. So yeah. are you originally from Long Island, that area up there? Yeah, I, I grew up uh, where actually in the house I'm in right now. So Oh, okay. So what was what was it like growing up in Long Island? Because I'm I'm from the south. I've been to New York City, but I've never been. Oh God, I sound like that idiot commercial. New York City. No, I've been to New York a bunch, but Long Island is still a, a mystery to me. It's. I mean, honestly, it's it's the same as any suburb. It's uh, okay. it's or uh, when I say it's the same as any suburb, I mean it's the same as any suburb if you stretch it out over a hundred miles. <laughs> okay okay because i mean we have a we have a, a ton of towns but um you know unless you go like i live on the south shore so uh it, it's you know it's completely flat here but okay. i'm also a 10 minute 10 minute drive from the beach which is nice 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 but i uh i, I go maybe once or twice a year <laughs> <laughs> well, that's i've got friends who live in just across the river in new jersey and she was like i never go into new york I was like, you would never be able to pull me out of New York if I in the oh, yeah. city <clears throat> if I lived up there. Like it's yeah. so insane to me. Because I went with her and I we went to a Yankees game. She's like, Man, this is my first time here. And I was like, What are you talking about? You got baseball here. You <laughs> come on, man. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where are you? You're in Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, right? Yeah. Okay. So we we have football. I don't, well, I can't reach it. I have a little lamp back there. That's a UT Vols helmet that I've had since I was a child. So nice. yeah. Yeah. We got football here. We got college football. We got baseball. They're building a minor league stadium downtown. It's a little bit of a kerfuffle because uh, a rich dude's doing it and people don't like that a rich dude's doing it. And it's just like, just who okay, cares? We got bigger, we got it bigger issues, man. <laughs> But <laughs> rich, rich dudes do everything. I mean, what, what do you expect? Yeah. yeah. Uh, any, any, if it's big, it's because a rich dude did it. Yeah. <laughs> or a rich, more, yeah. More than likely. And, and it's, well, it's also funny. I used to work for the guy and he is a very nice dude, but the people around him are not the best, much like a lot of rich dudes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. When, when, uh, when the laws don't apply to you, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's easy to do whatever yeah. the hell you want and be kind of a dick. 
Oh my God. All right. So what did your folks do for a living? Let's see. My dad, well, he just retired. Uh, he worked for, um, nice. he worked for the local gas utility for okay. my whole life. So that doing when I was a kid, he was out on in the cruise digging holes, uh, and putting putting gas pipe in and when he finally retired he was head of uh or he was helping manage some like new technology rollout and okay. some other stuff but uh it uh, yeah i don't it's funny though because he's the he, he was head of like new tech rollout but if you give him a any sort of computer or, or <laughs> phone to do anything on is good luck good luck i i, I taught i was i got his not not long ago, he was uh, working on where well, he was trying to figure out how to use a program that I had never used. He's like, I can't figure this shit out. Yeah. I, I walk in the office and I sit down and I'm like, here you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> never, never used this program before. I mean, I swear the program was written in like DOS, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was I, so bad. I'm shocked. Uh when my dad is actually able to operate a computer, when he actually gets oh. it to do something, it blows my mind. And it's just, it's insane. But now it's like, uh, he's retired and he take goes to everything. Like we have a thing down here, dogwood arts, like a walk through the flower garden. That's, he went, took a hundred photos, posted them to Facebook. There are people that follow him just to get these photos. I was like, my dad was a truck driver for 40 years and now he's a photographer. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. Yeah. Uh, how about your mom? What did she do for a living? Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, she, you know, bounced between a lot of different jobs. When I was really young, I think she worked as a vacuum salesperson. Okay. Um, but then around middle school, I, she started working for this company that did, uh, you know, school, um, it, it was school data. I mean, the company was called okay. e-school data. Okay. Um, and she, she was with them for a long time. Eventually the, they sold the business. She stayed with them for a little bit, uh, when they, so she could, you know, still keep the, uh, all the, all the clients happy. Uh, so yeah. she stayed on eventually she retired cause her, the, the contract that they had with her was up. And uh, she she stayed off for a year, but then clearly she was going a little nuts, uh, not doing anything. So now she works for them again. <laughs> That's awesome. That's my grandfather when he retired from the uh, from the railroad. I think he lasted maybe a month before he was like, I got to start doing something. So he started like managing apartments, like. Somebody owned the apartment, but he would be the one that go in and do all the plumbing, electrical, moving people. Oh, like in a and super. Out. Yeah, like, kind of like a super for multiple apartments. Yeah. And then he took, uh, this is how long ago this was, uh, trade school via mail to learn how to make keys. So then he made keys. Via mail. Via mail. Via catalog. You, how does, how this, does it even work? It was in the seventies. It was just correspondence courses on how to make keys. What do they do? Send you something? It's like, hey, complete this project and send us a key. I don't even know. It, it was in the seventies. <laughs> I have no idea, but he got really good at it. And then he, it was so funny rolling around with him or my dad because they would see a lock, busted lock in the middle of the street. They would pull over to the side, walk out into the street to get the lock. He's like, well, this still has good parts to it that I can strip this apart. I was like, good God, you're going to get hit. You're going to get hit. Like, and then my dad learned the maneuver of just drive by, open your door, reach down, grab it, throw it in the side and keep moving. Oh like, yeah. Just crazy uh, stuff. But yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't sit still except on Sundays to watch golf. That was the only thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That was, that was, that was my grandpa too. He was either cooking up some sort of weird uh either conspiracy or oh, nice. contraption conspiracy contraption or watching golf or playing golf nice those are those nice. are those are his uh <laughs> that's what he did nice was, uh, i play i grew up play, playing golf with him too and he always kept ch like changing my swing to do like weird things which made no sense <laughs> like 
looking back on it, I'm like he had me do this weird, like looping type of swing. I was like, what is this? Oh my god. I was, I was wondering why I never got that good, but oh my god. <laughs> he was probably turning around, walking back, going, I can't believe I got him to do that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think he was, uh, I mean, I, God, I was honestly, I was always just like this lanky kid though, growing up. I yeah. was like, I mean, I'm six, five now. Um, but you know, it, uh, like growing up, I was always big oh, though. Yeah. I was like, you know, like fourth, fifth grade, all the girls are taller than the boys. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that never happened to me. I was still taller than all of them. I didn't, I don't know what lanky's like. I was, I'm six, seven. Oh and- shit. When I graduated high school, I was six six three thirty. Like I have always been a big big boy. Yeah, yeah. To, to where at the company I work for, they keep joking. I I do marketing for them. I went to capture some photos and videos, and they're like, we were giving a presentation. They're like, and Jody's going to stand by the door and hold the door shut and be like, y'all are all signing with us before you leave, like a, an intimidator. I was like, no, no. I'm just going to take Go. photos and videos. No. Joe, let me, let me ask you something because yeah. I struggle. I struggle with this. Where the hell do you buy pants? Pants. I don't have a problem with it's shirts. I mean, yes. I, shirts. I have a very long too. torso. I have a very uh, long. Honest, that is same for me, but e- even so, like I go, I go to like a store like today. I, I tried to get something today and I'm like, I'm a, I'm only a 30, like six, five, but only a 34 inch inseam. Yeah. At like 38. Good luck. There's no, no one sells like a 38, 34 anywhere. Like okay, 30, yeah. 36, 34 for a bit, but now 38, 34. Can't find that shit anywhere. I am a 40. I'm technically a 33, but I will settle for a 32 and just wear yeah. my pants a little lower. And I've had crap shoot luck at Old Navy. Hmm. I don't know how, but. Interesting. Uh, shirts, I wear this type of shirt because it's the only one from JC Penny that I can get an extra tall. If it's not extra tall, it, it ain't working. Yeah. Well, I guess my problem is a lot of times, even when I, they don't really sell a medium or large tall, a lot of places. Uh, yeah. It's always it's the tall sizes start with an XL and I'm like, well, I'm, I'm swimming in the shirt now. <laughs> this is my dad's <laughs> thing of. He's like, he thought the opposite. Every clothing manufacturer thought if you're tall, you were skinny. If you're short, you were heavy. Or if you were heavy, well, you were that short. Too. Yeah. There's that but, too. With Because with the pants, I'll find like a 30, 34, 36 length. And yeah. I'm like, why the hell is not this length in a wider size? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's something. It's something. Uh. Okay, wait, since we're on this track, what size shoe do you wear? Uh, 13. Oh, shit. Okay. I wear 16, so it's every shoe I have to order. Yeah. It's oddball.com, or every once in a while, I'll get lucky on Zappos and find something in my size. But it's always just like, a, I hope this is a good shoe. <laughs> I can't try it on and wear it and hope it works. Yeah, so. uh, yeah that or you have to return it, which yeah. I never... Good luck getting me to return something. No. I just won't do it. That's why no. I don't order anything online unless I know it's my size. Yeah. Uh, okay. So when you're growing up, do you have any siblings or is it just you? Oh, uh, I've got two sisters. Okay. Uh, one sister is, a, she's like a year and a half older than me. Okay. And then I have a younger sister who is about a year and a half younger than me. Okay. Were you all... Are we, were you into art or did your parents kind of foster you all into getting into art as a kid, drawing or anything? Um, yes. Uh, it was more music that we were pushed towards, though. So. Okay. Uh, so uh, all of us played an instrument. We were all in band. Um, my older sister played the saxophone and then eventually nice. switched to the bassoon. Uh, my younger sister played the flute and then eventually switched to the bassoon. <laughs> um and i started with the saxophone and i stayed with the saxophone and okay. all, all through high school um and then i stopped playing it after high school like an idiot like honestly i it's one of those things where i try to pick it up now and i'm like yeah i'm like fuck i used to <laughs> like i i i look at some of the music i used to play as a kid like just like oh yeah i can sight read this no problem yeah and now i'm like trying to play it. i'm like how the fuck did i play this yeah yeah 
Oh, dude, I tried to learn how to play. It was the banjo. I was like, I knew the banjo was harder than the guitar. I was like, I'm going to try harder so that I can mm -hmm. then step down. And then I didn't, I didn't pick it up for like a week. And I, it just, it just all, all went gone. out. All the all cording gone. and everything. Trying to then go back to rolls and cording at the same time. I was like, no, I can't. I can't do this. It was a nightmare. Yeah. And uh, it, it's one of those things. I think I recently read a statistic. It's like, um, I think only 10% of people who pick up an instrument make it past three months. Wow. That's nuts. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to think of some crack of like, and some of them should have put it down. Justin Bieber. Or... <laughs> I mean, I mean, he'll say what you want about the guy. He, I mean, he does have talent. Like you can I, even see when he was a fucking kid, he like, you yeah. like kill it on, uh, on like, drums. See that shit. Yeah, you kill it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I not a fan, but like he has talent. He has talent. I was, I was trying to think of somebody I could crap on and not feel bad <laughs> about crapping on himself. Be I mean, oh yeah. yeah, totally, totally, totally. It's worth it that he's around, if nothing else, for that Kristen Wiig impersonation on SNL. Have you ever I seen that? I'm, I'm, no, I missed that one. Oh my god, it's the best. She. Kristen Wiig's a genius, but oh, I love her. No, uh, not Kristen Wiig. Shoot, how do I my blanket on her name? The one that was in Ghostbusters, the one that ah, this is gonna kill me. The one that just did the alien sketch on there. Why am I mixing their names up? Uh, I don't know. Ghostbusters, this is gonna, this is how this goes. I did not have enough coffee today, so my brain is is not braining. Kate McKinnon. That's who I'm thinking of. It's oh, Kate. yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kate McKinnon. She's also Yeah. Hilarious. Kate McKinnon doing the Justin Bieber impersonation is just, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, were you into comic books or cartoons as a kid? Um, definitely some Looney Tunes and some other animation okay. type things. I made... Mean, the show I know I remember as a kid, but I really liked uh, Dexter's Lab was, was oh, yeah. one of the ones I always loved. Um, yeah. I liked that one. It was like Samurai Jack that I always that I loved. Oh yeah. Um, what are the other ones that I really would look forward to watching? Those are the ones that I always chase down. I actually a lot of the Cartoon Network ones. I mean, I is that I remember Cow and Chicken? <laughs> Oh yeah, cow and chicken. Oh yeah, <laughs> cow and chicken. That one was. I I went back and I like looked at just watched a little bit of that at one point. It's like, what the hell was I watching? Oh my god, <laughs> it's it's so ridiculous. Uh, I am a little bit older, so I grew up in the uh, Ren and Stimpy, Beavis and Butthead, uh, yeah, all that liquid yeah. television stuff that was just like, what the, what is Aeon Flux? And why is it giving me weird feelings? Like, <laughs> oh, I don't, yeah, I never, I don't think I ever saw Ann Fox. I definitely saw Red and Stimpy and, uh, and Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. The, did, there were two versions of Red and Stimpy. There was the one on like Nickelodeon or whatever. And then oh, there was yeah. like a, there was the one MTV on, version. Like, yeah. Yeah. The MTV, MTV version was, was something. <laughs> What's, I remember the one where he farted and then turned it into a balloon. And walked around with it. And I was oh, just, God. and I was, I think like 14 or 15, just going, I am not stoned enough for this right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, there's the, the, those are the ones that I mostly watched. Okay. And then once I got into like high school, middle school, high school, I really didn't watch that much TV because, uh, okay. um, my sisters would always, if if the TV was open, either my sisters would be in charge of the TV, and they my older sister usually, and she'd want to watch some sort of uh, drama that I didn't care about. Okay. <laughs> um, and then if I did get control of the TV, it would be to play some video games. Okay. Uh, so uh, did y'all go to museums or anything as a kid? No. 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 Okay. Do you remember I mean, like a the a first piece or artist that kind of made you? Kind of like made the hairs on the back of your neck stand up or anything? Not really. Honestly, visual art didn't really even appeal to me until okay. like after college. Okay. So when you I were... did a lot. Go for I it. I liked making 
I, so I liked making stuff like, okay. Yeah. I mean, I still do. Like I got the thing that I did mostly as a kid, like I played with connects constantly. <laughs> okay. Like to a point where my, like I was going into middle school and I was like, I would start making my diorama projects and I would use connects as a scaffolding to make all the things nice. function. Nice. And I, I only stopped because, like, at one point, my sister's like, "If you keep bringing like toys in, like, people, your friends are gonna make fun of you." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> and I, I kind of put them down for a while. But <laughs> was there a, so when you were in high school? Was there any? Did you have any idea of like what you wanted to do, like as a job or anything? No. No, I mean, I went back and forth. At one point, I was like, oh, I'll be a musician. And then yeah. I, you know, then I kind of got talked out of that. Everyone was like, oh, there's no money in that. I let people talk me out of it. I'm going to be honest. I was pretty good. I could have, I could have, I probably could have made, made do with as a musician yeah. if I had stuck to it. Um, but then I was in multimedia as well. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll go into editing, like video editing. Oh. But I stopped watching TV like even well before high school. And then I, st I go to college and I'm like in this in school as a television major. And like, I have no idea what anyone's doing. Like I could theoretically do all this stuff, but I'm like, I'm not watching these movies that everybody's yeah. watching. I'm not watching any of this TV. I don't care about any of it at the time. So I was like, all right, whatever. I ended up changing my major in physics. Physics. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. That's a, I know. Like, I was like, "Why? Who does that?" Yeah. So, what was it about? Was there something about physics that you were like, "This"? Honestly, is what it, it was. It was in uh, in high school. I was well, when I was in college, and I really was not vibing with the uh, um, the, the television program. I said, "All right, well, what else did I do in high school that I could, or that what was I always good in that I could uh, switch my major to?" I was okay. like, oh, it's always, I always liked sciences. Like those science and math were always the other things I enjoyed. It's like, you know what? I'll, I'll go into one of those. And I was like, which one did I do best in and kind of enjoy and made more sense to me? I was like, ah, oh, physics. So, okay. Um, yeah, I switched my major to physics. Um, was uh, definitely uh, scooted by on that one. Okay. Uh, or scraped by. Um, and yeah and then once i finished college i just never i really never touched it again i mean i i kind of used some of the like logic to because i worked in some engineering jobs i had um got i, I worked for a 3d printing company at one point do, designing okay. stuff uh and i had to do some programming which i pulled from the physics degree i guess but then i had a ton of other jobs like all over the place okay what what at what point did you start creating art? Like what made you get into art? Uh what made me start doing it like regularly? Yes. Yeah. I was in the hospital because I tried to kill myself. Okay. Yeah. And how old, how things, old were you when that happened? It was a little over five years ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um so that I was living in Virginia at the time, but um, everything leading up to that, there's uh, God, I could I could talk about that for a very long time. But uh, the like while I was in the hospital, going like you know I didn't have access to my phone. They take your phone away. They take everything okay. away. So I'm in the hospital, and the only the only like there's not much to do. Well, like there's there's food, which is you know the saddest food you'll ever have. So for somebody with depression, it's very helpful. Uh, <laughs> um, and then yeah, you're sitting in this room with other people who've had crises of various, various natures. Um, and then you have some, some talk time where you're all sharing different things. You have, um, you have these these writing times where they're kind of giving you prompts and you're like journaling type of stuff. Okay. And okay. and then they also like between that time, there's not much going on except for it's like, oh, here's a puzzle. Here's this. But then they also had the other like group session that they had was art therapy. Okay. And 
one of the things about the art therapy was it's like, oh, okay, well, you can take stuff that you've written for like a journal and you can turn that into something or you could just go complete free form. You're like, how are you feeling? And you could just go complete process where like, just if you're feeling like, bah, you just start scratching it out. Really just put what you're feeling on the inside, just put it on that page. And, okay. or uh, So uh, a lot of the stuff in there was like more simple and it didn't like the actual types of things that they had didn't really resonate with me as much. I mean, there was like Zen tangles. There was just like all these other, um, and like a Zen tangle. It's like you, you put a couple dots on a page, you connect them in some sort of way. And then you just kind of um, make different patterns coming mm-hmm. off of those, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's a good way to doodle. Um, but it didn't really like for, for something it's like, well, I'm not going to, it's hard to put an emotion into that. At least for me, it was. Um, but I, the fact that I was letting my brain take the, the creativity, which honestly, before that, a lot of the creativity ended up being turned inwards. If I didn't have an outward outlet for it, it got turned inwards and I would find very creative ways to hurt myself, like oh, okay. internal internally. So, okay. So finding finding some sort of outlet was um, necessary, really. Okay. And did they do sculpture in there, or was it mainly they? So they did. Um, I mean, there was one time they brought uh, did like a clay. Like it was, yeah. They oh, yeah, just brought yeah. like this quick drying clay stuff, and they were like, "Oh yeah, make whatever." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." And that worked well for me because I tend to be pretty tactile. So any yeah. sort of you give me something to do with my hands, I will start yeah. making making something. It's like <laughs> Yeah. I, it's yeah. So you're in there. How long were you in there for? Is there uh I was inpatient for I think eight days and then I was outpatient for another two weeks. So almost okay. a month. Okay. So when you, when you got out, did you feel like, I assume you feel, felt like a pull to art, like it clicked something in your brain that made you. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was definitely something that I was like, all right, well, it wasn't even like specifically, I was like, I need to do art. It was like, well, I need right. to do something. I need to do something just creative. And it was not like, yeah, I mean, actually I have one of my earlier pieces over here. Um, I'll, I'll get it in a second. It's okay. on the side of the room. Um, but it was just a, uh, it was just like, oh, okay. And I'll, I'll, I, was, I was just playing with whatever I had at the time. Cause I, at okay. first it wasn't well, first it wasn't like these welded sculptures. It was just like, all right, I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to start taking drawing classes online. And then uh, I was like, okay, uh, I'll take this ceramics class, which has allowed me to do something and learn this other type of thing. And it's like, I'll take, so I took different classes. I have about 20 or so origami books that I've gone through. Okay. So I did, I, I seriously, I, I went through wow. a ton of them. I have one that's literally a textbook size thick and it's, oh it is straight God. up. A, it is straight up a textbook written by a physicist <laughs> who used it for art. I'm not even kidding. It that's is a amazing. Textbook written, that's just amazing. It, you go to the back you go to the last chapter and it's all al- algorithms for like, if you want to program your own oh shit my online. God. Oh my God. <laughs> That's great. I mean, That's great. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. There's the guy's name is uh, Robert Lang. And I think he works for, I think he does some like engineering for NASA where they, cause they want all okay. those pieces to fold up and very oh, yeah. neatly yeah. into, um, into, so it could fit in a rocket for these satellites to go up it's like oh they got to open it up smoothly into like this flat yeah. flat sheet like a piece of paper <laughs> i, I want to uh, i want to be there at nasa when somebody just walks in with that big ass book and slams it on the table it's like we got our guy right here this is our guy. <laughs> look at this thing <laughs> this is our Dude, guy. <laughs> I, I, you should see like you think origami you think oh paper crane you think yeah. this you think that like even even when I was like, oh yeah, there's some complicated stuff. They, I just saw some uh, artwork from, um, it's I think it's USA Folds or something that just okay. I don't know. There there was some convention that just came out because I was following some some origami artist, 
incredible. You look at it, you're like, how yeah. is that a piece of how? Like, yeah. I, I know how they do it. And I'm still like, how the hell did they fold that so crisp and so tiny? Because you look yeah. at the paper, it's like, it'll be this big and the details are minute. Yeah. It's, oh God, it's nuts. It's, I wonder if how much of it is like, so I come from printing and like you had to learn how to score and fold oh, yeah. paper and you'd have the, called the bone, this piece of, wet, of uh, yep. ivory yep. to do that. It's like, I wonder how many of those longstanding traditions that people have been using for something else for thousands of years. Somebody's like, you know, I could make this work better if I did this pulled from over here. It's probably mm -hmm. something like that, but the origami and getting it just perfect. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. so you tried a bunch of different things. Uh, oh, yeah. Was the sculpture and the metalwork kind of the thing that felt like it clicked into place a little bit more? It clicked into place. And also, it got a lot of good reception. It went okay. From, I, like, so I had made. A couple simple pieces like starting off one of them was just like a gift for my dad and like really the, the way i got into this was um it's like because i i was a welder when i lived in virginia i was a welder okay um, and then i had moved out and i worked in other construction uh jobs i did like uh uh some shop drawing type type work so taking architect drawings and then making it work for the type of systems we used um, for uh, we, we did storefront and curtain wall. So like, yeah, anyway, okay. um, so that I, but I had a machine that I had purchased. So I took the machine. I was like, well, I'm gonna, what do I what can I make with this? So it's like I have some ideas, but like, does this machine even still run? Uh, does, can I, like, what do I need to get this up and running again? So I can work on some other random ideas I had. I had an idea for like a simple lamp, which I didn't ever do anything with. I actually have all the pieces from it still. This is like five years ago, almost, almost five years ago. Um, but then I was like, well, I have this old set of flatware. I wonder if I could do anything with this. Uh, it is stainless steel, so I should be able to weld it. So I made this stick figure essentially out of spoons, <laughs> out of spoons. Um, and it, it was okay. I made a couple more. Uh, so I made a few for friends. Um, and then I made like my my aunt asked for a couple of fishermen that she wanted to give as oh. gifts to some people. I was like, okay, yeah, sure, why not? Um, but then then I moved, uh, so I didn't really make anything more for a while. Um, and I was still in Virginia, but I had moved, so I didn't I didn't have space for my machine, so I didn't make anything for a while. Uh, met somebody who had a a shop, but he mostly did uh, woodwork. So I, but. He wanted, he had some projects that he needed metal. I was like, oh, actually, I, I have a machine if you want to, like, oh, you, you know, nice. you let me use your space a little bit. I could make you a couple things that you need. It's fine. So we had a, a like a, a kind of working relationship, but um, uh, it, it, it was, it was, I could only come in in like very weird times. If he was free and I was free after work, then I could come in and do it. So, didn't stick around too long. I made a couple couple small pieces while I was there. Um, and then I moved back to New York during COVID, or beginning of COVID, because um, my whole family was here and, you know, it hit, it hit New York pretty bad. So I was like, uh, yeah. I know, I was like, I'd rather be near my family if someone gets yeah. really sick instead of like shut down states yeah. away. Yeah. So um, luckily, no one in my family got too sick uh but uh what do you call it um yeah then i i didn't touch it again for a few years until like a little over a year ago is when i picked it up again um and that was after working in an it job which i just not happy with i ended up working for a climbing gym for a bit because i was just like okay. all right i, I as I was trying to climb anyway. So I was like, you know what? Now I could climb for free and figure get out what paid. the hell I'm doing. <laughs> get, get exactly. Paid. Get paid, get paid, get paid and climb a bit. Yeah. Um, 
so from there that I, in that whole time I was doing, I working at the climbing gym and a couple other jobs. I started to pick it. I picked up photography and got, uh, cause my sister gave me her old, her old camera, which she broke and said, Hey, if you fix this, you can keep it. I said, okay. <laughs> So that's a, that's a sister. That's a sibling thing to do. <laughs> so it's like, oh, hey, I, hey, I accidentally broke this. Uh, if, if you fix it, you can have it. I'm like, OK, so I fixed it. I fixed it. I just I took it apart. And then whatever was jammed, just unjammed itself. I was like, all right, well, this is mine. Perfect. This is mine now. <laughs> um, so then I just started futzing around with the, the camera for a while. Uh, yeah. I got a job as a f- school photographer. Okay. And burnt myself out doing that. Ooh. And yeah, oh god. Because I mean, at that point, you know, they were paying me like it was two hundred bucks a day. Not which you know, it's not terrible, but not great. But that would be driving to who knows where. I yeah. wouldn't find out. I didn't find out until like the night before where I would have to go the next day. So if I had plans to you know grab a, like a late dinner or a drink with a friend, and then find out that oh i'm gonna have to wake up at 4 a.m to get where i need to go in connecticut like, oh my god it's like oh it's like it was like i was like all right well i guess i'm canceling these plans because i'm going to bed at like <laughs> super early yeah and it was you know every day it's like you, you didn't get your schedule for the week you would get it the night before it's nuts that's um, nuts so yeah, it was not not great. Like they would, they didn't give you any sort of uh, like they they would pay you for gas for the number and like for mileage, but they didn't. Uh, there's no nothing extra for the wear and tear, nothing extra for you know oh, carrying yeah. the equipment. Nothing, yeah, for carrying the equipment around. So it's like you know I, this isn't worth it. This, when the season, yeah. I finished the season. When the season was over. I was like, nah, I'm done with this. I'm taking a break. So, yeah. um, it's like all right. I guess I'll pull out my uh my welder again and see what i can make so I, ha- I still had a ton of silverware from from like what i had bought some stuff earlier so i was like all right whatever and we started making some things they started off pretty simple again yeah uh it kept going kept going and, and now it's it's like yeah, i have i have pieces in the michelin restaurant down in virginia I have, holy crap yeah i got a couple pieces in the caviar place in manhattan uh just finished a piece for a local diner they have one like right right in the front and got stuff in a gallery yeah i got a bunch of branded commissions here and there yeah so you started out with silverware and you kind of kept up with it because it felt right and because people kind of liked it and it was like you know what i nobody else was doing it either it's like there's like I think there's two other people that do it and they were really three. One of them, he lived in, one of all the guys lives in Ohio. I even tried to reach out to him, but I, I oh. don't think he does it anymore. Cause he's, uh, he was older and I think he had like Parkinson's. So he wasn't able oh, to do okay. it anymore. So, um, so is it difficult yeah. to find silverware to create the sculptures or. Uh, yes. And no, I mean, I have a ton that I, that I've got from thrift stores and yeah. uh, garage sales. And that's getting to a point where people just right. say, Hey, I'm getting rid of this. Do you want it? I say, just, yes, I do. Please give it to me. And I will make something out of it at some point. That that was going to be uh, my next question is if people know you like it, because I have over 500 antique cameras Cause I'll just all of a sudden picked up an antique camera. I was like, I don't like antique cameras. So I'd pick and scrounge and find some. And then all of a sudden I just start getting boxes of them from people. <laughs> and I was, I was like, holy shit, this is okay. What are you going to, what do you even do with all of them? Good question. Good question. Yeah, <laughs> They're yeah. taking up room in my basement right now. And eventually what I would like to do is fix them up, like fix any holes in the bellows and thing. And start mm. shooting with oh, them. That, okay. Yeah. Shooting with them or giving them to friends. I've got a lot of friends, kids who are starting to get into actual like film photography now. Okay. And I was like, I, I would like to kind of get into that stuff. I can probably sell a lot of them to what's it called? Uh, home decor, it, like interior uh, designers. Yeah. I can probably sell them a lot of the interior designers. It's, but it's it, funny because I, I literally gave one to my sister 
to put on display because she works in she does work in television that's amazing but i don't know it's one of those things i am a single dude so they don't have to go anywhere so they're just here until i figure out what i want to do with them right uh okay that yeah that was gonna be my next i assume people just here i have all the silverware like oh yeah take it yeah um that's i I also if if i'm doing a project though where i need like a ton of consistency then i go just go to a restaurant supply store and pick up oh okay Uh, okay because i i when i first started making pieces i was like oh i'm i'm gonna try to find this this uh this you know this cutlery with some interesting patterns and see how i could work the pattern into the piece yeah and i'm like that gets lost. I don't care. I, I, <laughs> I tend to go with a lot more simple pieces if I, or like simple individual yeah. uh, piece of cutlery. And then I, I go for the full shape. And then if somebody wants to walk up close and see the detail, they can, but yeah. you know, if I'm making like a, something that's, you know, a couple of feet big, nobody, that, that little detail is going to get lost, especially since uh, the pieces I do are, they tend to be more of like an open, open form. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, I saw one. Wasn't there one that it almost looked like it was a not light fixture, but it was something like attached. It was a light to fixture. Yeah. It was a light fixture. Okay, that's uh, that's in the caviar place. So that's okay. uh, uh, that one is hanging over their their caviar tasting table. Holy crap! Okay, yeah, and that's that's in Manhattan. Some bougie. <laughs> Is caviar bougie. tasting table? <laughs> I know, I know. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a caviar <laughs> boutique in Manhattan called um, okay. Petro- Petrosian. It's a, it's a French company. There's, there's a photographer I follow, a Russian photographer that lives in New York. I guarantee you, she's been there. I should oh, send her a message oh, and be like, "Hey, next time you're in there, look up. I know that guy." <laughs> yeah, you know they also have a sturgeon in the in their front window that I oh made. God. So. Oh god! So what what's the biggest piece you've ever created? Uh, until recently, those were so that the okay the the sturgeon in the front window was about was just under five feet long. And the the chandelier with the the lighting fixture that was that hung down about seven feet. Holy crap! Um, but the the one I made most recently, there was a, a art expo in New York that I went to, and I was like, oh, I want to make something incredible. So I made an orca. Oh my god! And, okay, and that that one had a thousand forks in it. <laughs> a thousand forks also sounds like a great band name or album title. It a could, thousand it could forks. Be, yeah. <laughs> a thousand forks. Yeah. That's your uh bassoon bassoon saxophone band with your sisters. It is a thousand forks. That's it. I'm calling even, it right now. I don't I don't I don't even think they could play the bassoon anymore if they tried. That's, it's it's avant-garde, <laughs> man. It's avant-garde, man. I don't know what to tell you. That's what you do. You just say it's avant-garde. It's art, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the smallest piece you've ever created? Uh, oh, the smallest piece? Yeah. Um, let's see. The smallest piece I ever made. Actually, oh, it was a uh, kayak fisherman. Okay. It was it was two butter knives that I had okay. bent bent slightly around to make the, the kayak shape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the entire body was just made from a single fork. So there's a like each each tine was bent to be one of the arms. Yeah. And um and then how did I oh I, I had a very tiny no sorry, I had a very tiny spoon that I don't even know where it came from. That was the body and the head. And then the arms and legs were the tines of the fork that I found. Uh the outer tines, which are yeah. generally a little thicker, those I made the legs. The okay. inner two I made as the made, I bent it to the arm, uh, and then I used the handle from the um. Was I used the handle from that that fork to make the fishing pole since I ripped it off? So I, that okay. was so I the, the long fishing pole which I bent, uh, and then I had a couple more tines that I used because it was a fishing kayak. So I was like, all right, well, it needs. If it's like an uh, because we're right on the ocean, the ocean kayaks they for the fishermen they generally have that little pontoon on the side too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I used another handle from a different fork to 
make that as the pontoon. Nice. And then I use the tie I use the tines to connect that to the, nice. the main kayak. And okay. then um there's a couple little parts parts of it that I wanted to fill in. Yeah. And I just used any any little scraps that I had from the rest of that to make all the little little tiny pieces. In in any of these pieces, are they usually one off piece or have you ever done anything like like a school of the same fish. You know what I mean? The, like, so, okay. So the chandelier, yeah, the, that one is 72 of the same fish. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, each and each one, Oh God, this, that took me 20 hours to install. Uh, because it was, so each, each fish had two, two connection points, but we didn't really know how low we wanted to, wanted that to hang until we yeah. were installing it or I say we, but until I was installing it. Uh, so I had to set the length of each one by hand while I was on site. Oh, oh God. So that, that took me about 20. Years. I didn't, we didn't know how, how stretched out we wanted the spiral to be. We didn't, yeah. I didn't like, didn't know yeah, uh, if I wanted it to be like a regular pattern or have it slightly off. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to kind of set a general shape and then I'll, I'll fill it in with the rest of them. But still, I take to get the height right for every single one. It took me 20 hours. Um, and that was 70 something uh, for the orca. I made I made 500 fish of the same type of fish. Wow. And okay. I I took those fish, those 500 fish, and I I made like kind of a. a random random ish mesh out of them that I, that I kind of okay. molded into, into okay. the shape of an orca. Okay, man. Holy crap. <laughs> oh man. The 20 hours is giving me palpitations, man. That's, that's oh, yeah. intense. It was, uh, it was two, two and a half days on just standing on a scaffold. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, anything, d- do you use some of the things you learned in doing photography to take better photos of these? Cause metal such a weird thing with like, you know, reflections and I, light. I and struggle stuff. with it. Okay. I struggle with it. I, I ever, a lot of people tell me I do a good job with it, but I, I, I okay. struggle. I mean, if you look, you look, you've definitely seen, you've looked at my Instagram, right? Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. I, I have a lot more faith than other people. <laughs> like I, I just look at it, I was like, no, I can see. That. I've got friends that they do all kinds of crazy stuff with like one dude I know when he takes photos of bottles for a uh, distillery, he told me once about how many different layers and angles and lighting setups just to get one bottle photo. So I think yeah, I look I, at people's work and I'm like, I can see that is good to me. I'm going to look again. Cause I got that's, yeah so that's it. yeah if you look at that like I, put, I yeah they're not they're not incredible shots though like if i spent i could spend more time but i i don't but if i spent more time doing that like you know at that point i'd rather get a at some point i'd like to have a photographer come through and, and do that okay yeah uh because i like i i could spend hours trying to set this up and take the perfect pictures of this stuff but i you know it's I mean, I, I'm already a one one person show, except for yeah. like the random help I get on on occasion. So, I <laughs> uh, no. go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, yeah. It's just like if I have an art show, it's like okay, the, the somebody will help me unload a truck. But otherwise, the set up there. I mean, the whole expo. I you know, essentially yeah. five days in a row. It was like install on Wednesday. I had somebody help unload the truck, but then you know, set it, finish setting up at like Wednesday into, and then Thursday more setting up and then talking to people Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day, Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. just me. It's, it's just me in, the, in my, it's my me in my booth for like eight plus hours a day for like yeah. four days in a row. Just dee, 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 dee. like <laughs> I, I do, I, I do my Instagram. I do, I make all the pieces. I do. I did my website yeah. myself. Uh, like, I, I, yeah, it's, it's okay. a lot. I, I be adding the photography on there other than like a single light that I put on the side and a couple yeah. other things. Like I use the nice camera, 
get it in focus. That's that's about as far that's as I, it. I'm willing. I'm willing to go with it. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any other media you're interested in, or is there any different uh, ways of doing what you're doing now that you've thought of or want to try eventually? Uh, there are a ton of things that I would like to try. Okay. Um, I honestly, I would love to take, I would love to go into some glass blowing a little bit. I, I okay. that, that looks yeah. interesting. That, I mean, to me, that looks incredible. Um, but I, you know, I, I would probably like to take a blacksmithing course at some point. I think it would help me a lot in what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, just, just in, um, uh, getting this, just, just an it, it, it's just a, a way of working metal that uh you know it's it, there's not too much of it not too many people that do that though i don't know how it'll work with if with stainless which is mostly what i use um yeah. but i i mostly use forks and stuff right now but like uh, any scrap metal will do i'm currently working on a uh i just started working on a dragon which a I, i've already got is it, it's going to be made almost entirely of um, these little punch outs from a machine shop. Okay. So a couple months ago, was somebody my father worked with is uh, knew somebody in a machine shop that said, Hey, do you, do you want, he's like, Oh, I wonder if he just wondering if I could use them. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's see what I can make. I ended up making a, a cool pattern, which I used as a background for like one of my wall mounted pieces nice and um i was like okay that's cool and i was playing with it it's like you know this actually make really cool scales and it's just like well they're just it's the, it's the same it's just like a little um oval shape mm -hmm. and or i thought it, I, I thought it was a dog a tag slot. when i when i looked at it i thought it was a dog tag because that's what kind of looked like to me oh, oh okay yeah because you could see the dragon the start yeah. of it um yeah. But yeah, those those are just uh, little little knockouts for some sort of slot, huh. uh, in in like a, a metal stamping machine, and they saw that I did, and then they came. He came back. I've now have, I have two five gallon buckets full of them. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I've got two cool. five like, gallon cool. buckets you... full of these little tiny things, and I'm like, well, what am I gonna do with these? Well. <laughs> Now I know what I'm going to do. It's just going to take me a long ass time to do it. <laughs> I love that. Here, this is your problem now. Here, take these. These are your problems. I see, it's not, see, to me, I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but no, I, 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 I think I'm like in general, I'm probably going to stick to you know, um, uh, re recycling. Okay. You know, essentially, essentially taking taking somebody's. I like I like the you know taking the trash and making something out of it. Okay. Um, I saw actually at the art the expo I was just at. Um, there was this other artist who did this like similar types of things. He mostly used uh, plastics though, and then he used the colors yeah. of them, and he he kind of melted them into like these huge wall pieces, which are they were gorgeous. Mostly there was one that made me want to, but it was mostly because of what it was made of, but. Um, then uh, I was like, there was one that he used a bunch of, um, uh, I, I guess he, he dehydrated a bunch of like orange slices and lemon slices, a bunch of citrus slices. It's like, yeah. And then he, you know, had them all set out on there and then came back and impregnated them with resins so they wouldn't, you know, rot or anything. Okay. I was like, actually, for some of these like human ish forms that I make, yeah, I was like, if I were to come back and make clothing out of that, oh yeah. So, so yeah. I was like, and I, I literally had this this idea last night. I'm like, I saw this guy's art, and I didn't even think of this until last night. This was like a couple of weeks ago now, but um, yeah, I was like, oh, it's like it'd be kind of cool if I could take those things, kind of get them in the right shapes, put them in a dehydrator, come back and impregnate them in with the right kind of resin, and then bring it back. And I was like, well, now I have this sort of form and I'm still recycling. It still fits the kitchen theme. If I'm using, if I continue to do the yeah. kitchen stuff um, and it's a, uh, and it, it would bring, it would bring a natural color to a lot of yeah. the stuff that I do because right yeah. now everything is, you know, I can paint stuff, but I don't really love painting it. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of, uh, 
Although I've got these, uh, shoot, what are they called? Cocktail forks that are black. Mm -hmm. They're straight up black. So I smoke cigars and my buddy figured out a cocktail fork is great for the end, for the nub. You put it in and you can still smoke the cigar without burning your fingers. Yeah, so I okay. found these yeah. black, black cocktail like, forks. Like that, a little roach clip. Yep. Yep. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know anything about that. I mean, <laughs> I'm in Tennessee, man. Uh, uh, is there is there anything you would like to see more? This is a big question, but is there anything you would like to see more of in art and creativity? In general? In general, yeah. God, I, honestly, it's... I go, like, it's even hard to... You, honestly, if you go to a, any art, like a big art expo, you're you're you'll be astounded by the amount of creativity people have with yeah. just doing things. Um, even this art expo, I mean, there was there was a ton of people doing, you know, their version of of the same, yeah. excuse me, same same sort of styles. So you have your, you know, your uh, honestly, it's it's hard it's hard to say like. If if I ever feel like I want to do something like creatively, I'm just gonna do it. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I, yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's I I don't I don't really know because okay. people have such create people always have such creative ideas with what's there as it is. Like uh, I can see I, I honestly <laughs> I'm astounded. I see stuff every day where I'm like, holy shit, somebody decided to do that. That's awesome. I think you may be the first positive person that's ever had. A, that's the first positive response to that question I've ever had. Like, honestly, yeah. Like, yeah. If I'm like, oh, what do I want to see? I could come up with some like, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, it's like, I wish people would recycle more. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I do. But like, yeah, people, I honestly, there's so much creativity out there. And yeah. I, it's one thing that people always say to me, like, oh, man, I can't believe you do what you do. And I'm like, I, it's because I it's because I keep doing it. Just yeah, do something and keep doing it. I don't care if it's I don't know, you want to drink upside down for a while, <laughs> you just keep doing it. I guarantee yeah. you those people will You'll eventually it find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anyone in particular you'd like to work with? Um that's interesting. Um, like anyone. Like if there's anyone big I want to work with, I honestly I don't even know. It's like there's there's types of work that I want to do, and I don't really care okay. who it's with as long as it's the right type of person we get okay. along. Okay. Um, like the, the one name that comes to mind uh, only because a few people have pointed him out is like Jeff Coons, but like yeah. even then I I don't know the guy. I mean he he could be <laughs> he could he could be a pleasure to work with, and he could be a nightmare to work with. I know I know his projects are huge, and he's got yeah. um. I, I know his. I mean, he's got small stuff, but then he has the huge projects, which yeah. take you know years to work on because it's like, oh, here's a giant stainless steel balloon animal, balloon yeah. dog, which it needs a ton, probably a, a ton of um, structural engineering that's inside of it to make sure yeah. it doesn't collapse. But um, yeah, otherwise, okay. it's like again, if there's a project that I could work on that I have an idea, or if somebody else can work with me on my idea or has an idea that I could bring my ideas to. That's, okay. that's all that matters to me. Well, okay. So in that vein, do you set goals or have like checklists? Uh, it's been very much wild West for the last year. <laughs> like okay. whatever happened, whatever's, okay. whatever's thrown in me has been what happens. Okay. I make, I make what uh, seems interesting to me. Uh, if somebody comes up with, with a commission idea, then I'm happy to, you know, do all the research and come up with like a pose and do all the types of stuff for myself. Okay. But like, I I'm always happy to take commissions. If somebody's like, Hey, you, so you seem like somebody that could do this, but yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Do you know what you'd like to do in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd, it'd be great to have my own uh, own shop somewhere closer to the city. Um, honestly, if I could continue doing art in some sort of way professionally uh, and 
continue to dance without destroying my body uh <laughs> i'll be can, happy if you figure that one out you gotta let me know i'm i'm an old a, old athlete how old? everything well, how, how old are you i'm 40 what am i this year i'll be 46 this fall okay yeah you got 10 me 10 years on me then yeah i'm i've got a lot of injuries from sports that sometimes if so, i just sit down too long i'll stand oh, up dude. and be like pop 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 I'm starting to feel some of my injuries from my <laughs> my twenties because I, yeah. I played rugby. I played rugby in my uh, early twenties, like a oh my a, god, not yeah. not not smart. That was not yeah. smart. Yeah, <laughs> um, broken collarbone, broken nose, broken. There's a yeah. torn ACL. I just, that was that did yeah. The rugby was. I had I made some good friends on the team, but like uh, the, the actual playing of the sport was yeah not smart for me. Um, yeah, so I will just. Now I stick, I'll stick to dancing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there any particular museum where you'd like to see your work displayed? Particular museum. Maybe, I mean, it'd be pretty awesome if I could get stuff in the MoMA, but yeah. um, I don't think that's my style. I like based on what's in the MoMA now and what I've seen there. I, my, I don't think my work would work there. Um, I haven't, been to um the guggenheim in a while but i know they tend to do stuff that's more interest not more interesting but like architectural and they have the interesting type of interiors mm -hmm. um i don't know as to say i like there this is such a new world to me like yeah, i've been okay. in it for i've been in this world for like about a year so i'm like i don't even know i was just okay i, I was, it's, again I started doing this as a as a hobby, just like as a way to get what's in here, yeah, out just to put it outwards instead of keeping it all inside, and uh, and it's just it's just kind of been doing it. It's just been going off on its own path, and I've just been like on. I've been on the ride, taking the ride. Okay, just, that's this uh, this is something maybe on down the road. But have you ever thought about teaching art therapy at some point? I have. Um, it's it's also funny because when I first when I started getting back into this, I was actually dating somebody who was an art therapist, and okay. uh, it was. And, and she she introduced me to some other little like types of art forms too, which were which were fun. But um, it's I, I don't know if I want to go back to school for it because oh. <laughs> you, you oh, need to. <laughs> like uh, there's there's so many other things i'd like to go back to school for that i yeah. don't i don't think i could go back for um like another like a, yeah i don't know i feel like as time is wearing on they're relaxing some of the rules because i went to the student show for the college i went to and i, I was sitting there talking to professors and they were like if you ever want to come teach a class it's like i can't i don't have the you know, a high enough level. You have to have like a master's damn near a PhD. And they're like, no, you don't not at this point. They're like, we hmm. need, we need people. So yeah. especially something specialized, like if it's physics, I get it. But when it's something like art or graphic design, they were actually telling me, they're like, you have your associates and you have five years professional experience. I was like, well, I actually have closer to 25 years professional experience, but sure. Sure. I meet the yeah. five years. I, yeah they're like yeah you can teach i don't know i i think it could hit a point where some of that stuff could be relaxed a little bit it should be jesus if there, you do if you do what yeah. you do for 10 years it's ridiculous for people to be like no we need you to have a piece of paper like, i that's know silly i know it is it is sorry it, i'm, it, I'm it was... gonna get off my soapbox here oh no 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 you, you stay on that soapbox <laughs> i'll join you on the soapbox and stay uh, you know that's it's it's like they they they're like oh we need we need more of this we need more teachers yeah. we need more teachers we need more good teachers and then they like do everything to make it the worst yeah. job in the world yeah <laughs> you know, seriously like, this is like we're gonna underpay you uh everybody's gonna blame you for everything that's wrong with their kids yeah. <laughs> it's like well this uh, is so my my old high school was a vocational school and i just got yeah. word last week so it was vocational. They I, I came up in printing, so I took printing up in my high school, and 
a new teacher came along and she didn't know how to run the press equipment. So they got rid of that and she just taught graphic design. And now she's about to retire and they're getting rid of design. I was like, you're killing me, man. I was like, you got to teach these yeah. kids something other than math and English and What's, science. They, yeah, it's every time they, honestly, every time they get rid of, it's, it's yeah, it's because they don't want people thinking for themselves. I will say the, I, the, the one good thing about my old high school is they hired two younger art teachers and those two teachers good. are killing it. They are doing a great job. And I'm, super proud that there are younger people there with a little what's it called vim and vigor a little they're a little yeah they're like we're gonna do this we're gonna do this right and i'm i'm happy for them i hope hope their budgets stay yeah <laughs> stay up yeah yeah i mean though like thinking back to it like this the classes that i loved most at, like in middle school yeah where uh home ec when I, surprisingly, it's because we did, we had like a semester where all we did was cook. Yeah. Love, I, I still love oh, cooking. Yeah. And we had a semester where we, where we sewed. Yeah. I, I, I actually, every once in a while, I still pulled the sewing machine out to fix things. But, um, and then the other class was, uh, uh, was tech. Yeah. You know, we're in the or shop class. Yeah. And it's guess silly. what? They're gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're gone. Yeah, this is, there's a guy I work with that his, I'm trying to remember how old his kids are. I think they're like four, three or four and like one. And he and I got into a very long conversation about schools now. I was like, look, dude, I know you're a young father, but man, your kids need to learn art. They need to take theater. They need to take, I was like, if nothing yes. else to get around other kids in something they care about. So that that's like a forced, yeah. what's it called? Socializing. That's almost like a for, Honestly, forced. Honestly, that's socialize. yeah. A school. I feel like school is more of a forced social socialization than anything else. Yeah. So like home people, some people homeschool and I'm like, yeah, cool. Homeschool. But like, make sure you're getting your kids to yeah. things. Yeah. All right. The big last question is if you could talk to the 14 year old version of yourself, what would you tell them? Uh, I would say, let's see, I would say one, I would probably say, uh, pursue music, <laughs> pursue don't music put down the saxophone. <laughs> don't put down, put, don't put, don't put down the saxophone. <laughs> maybe pick up, maybe pick up more instruments. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one would be just be like, you know, right. Just go, go the creative route. Just go the creative route. Uh, you know, it's, I say it's not for everybody. It's not easy, but go the creative yeah. route. Okay. All right. Thank you for being on. Yeah, sure thing, Jody. Thank you. Thanks for having me.